Hey guys, uh, so this video is going to be how to get the most performance out of your machine. You can uh, you can underclock it, um, you can overclock it, overclocking. You will, the things that we're doing are uh, extending the thermal ceiling before it throttles the machine. So normally it wants to throttle like 62 degrees Celsius and you can make it go pretty goddamn high. I've made it go to 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, I don't really recommend that you do it unless you're monitoring your temps. When you first power on your machine, you can press the Dell key, the delete key, when you see the GPD Win logo, and it'll jump you straight into the BIOS. Um, before we go forward with any of these things, I wanted to make it very clear that any of these settings that you do may make your GPD Win not even boot up anymore, so you have to be very careful. Um, one of the settings I'm going to show you is uh, changing the timings on your RAM. It'll come uh, by stock as typical. I've set mine to fast um, and crossed my fingers, and it booted up and still worked. So, um, you can actually make the memory go to 966 megahertz, um, uh, 933, I'm sorry, so 1866 uh, dual data rate. You can do that. I haven't done it until I find out a way to basically clear the CMOS via some type of hotkey. I'm not going to change it that much. I was just, I risked it with the timings because I figured maybe it'll work, but, um, you know that as as the community develops maybe we'll we'll go forward with that so yeah that's a long intro but again you could totally break your gpd win by doing these things so keep that in mind so you want to go to advanced cpu configuration and you're going to go to thermal configuration i have dts as disabled um you don't need it enabled this state right down here where it says power technology where you see that it's uh set as energy efficient by default don't disable it because if you disable it that will disable your turbo mode so you'll be stuck at 1.6 gigahertz on your cpu instead you want to go to custom and you just want to enable all these things and have your p state at uh all the c7 state limit is actually a very deep sleep um i just wanted to have that so that my system could save a lot of power uh let's see these are some other settings, so max CPU C state C7. Uh, this is speed step. You want that enabled. Speed step, if you don't have that, you're again going to be only at 1.6 gigahertz. So here is a big one. Um, you can see that all these passive chip points I've made at 80 degrees Celsius or 85 degrees Celsius um, as the passive chip point. Let's focus on these. By default, these are like 62. So everything that you see that says passive ADC, I um, they were default at 60, 62C and I made them ADC. So that's going to increase your thermal uh, throttle limit so you can get better performance for a long amount of time. If you plan on doing uh, a heatsink mod, it might be uh, okay to go ahead and increase these values because if your plan is to improve the efficiency of the heatsink mod, then go ahead and raise it. But if you're not going to do that, don't do this, because I was just doing it to see how far I can push my system. Further along down here, I have Intel Dynamic Power disabled. That's enabled by default. The starting power state, P0, is max performance, so I have that at P0. Uh, super debug, I think that's all the settings in here. Uh, thermal failsafe settings. This is just proc hot as a bi-directional. Uh, signal that gets sent when you throttle. I have that as disabled. This is that Android thing, which maybe maybe the community can figure out later on. Uh, this is some bio stuff and OS booting stuff. Platform system component. So you can. There's one option here where it says power and performance, and these are for all the different components along the PCI bus and USB bus and all that other stuff. I just leave it at power and performance. I didn't see any real benefit by going to performance. But you may, you know, give give it a whirl. You have all these options in front of you, so go ahead. Um, these two are important. Don't touch them, ever. <laughs> all right? Uh, if you disable uh, this one, I don't know what the hell happened. If you disable this one, your screen won't work. So you'll have to go back into the BIOS and basically re-enable it blind. Uh, if you disable this one, I don't know what the hell will happen. Uh, I don't want to touch it. Um, integrated graphics turbo enable was disabled by default. I enabled that. Um... I'm not too sure what this does because it only maxes out at 600 megahertz and stays there pretty good. Power meter lock is a huge one. You're going to want to disable that one because power meter lock is going to 
want to force your GPU to use 400 megahertz more often than 600 megahertz. So disabling that is a, a good start. Graphics boost I have is enabled. That's off by default. PR3 I left enabled. DVMT preallocated. So this is 512 megabytes. And all that means is that I am preallocating a half a gigabyte of RAM of my system RAM to graphics. So when you start up my system, it'll say 3.5 gigabytes of uh, RAM available. DVMT total, you're going to want to keep that at max, and that's by default. The aperture size, all of these settings are default, and I left them that way. IGD thermal, if you disable this, it will stay at 600 megahertz at all times, the GPU. This is not a good feature to uh, have as disabled, because it'll just chew up power for no reason, even if you're idle. Uh, definitely don't do it. Panel configuration, MIPI is the uh, interface for connecting to it. Don't change this, because you'll not have a working display. Same with this. Uh, that's that. Let's see, panel control, we don't need any of that. Uh, display from Type-C. Um, I have to enable this to test it. Uh, if you do four lanes, technically, you should be able to do di display port and uh, USB 2 data and power at the same time. Uh, I've never enabled it yet, but I'm going to go ahead and enable now. Uh, there's nothing to change in here. Memory configuration options. So there are a few things that I did in here. Here is where you can actually increase the the RAM, so uh, the frequency of the RAM. You see where it says 1866? This is making your RAM run at 933 megahertz as opposed to 800 megahertz by default. That's a significant speed boost, especially when your GPU is being fed by that system RAM. Uh, I leave it at 1600. I, I would hope that we could play with this, but I'm scared to do it because I don't want it not to work. Um, I don't know, we'll figure that out later. Channel selection, you can see it says dual channel RAM. You definitely want to keep that enabled. Uh, all of these things I have, these are all enabled by default. The only thing I turned off was the scrambler, uh, memory scrambler, memory scrambler, uh, because it seems to have just, it's, use is supposed to be power efficiency, um, and to um, make it harder to, for security uh, purposes, to make it harder to read memory from it. I didn't bother with that. This one is an important one, um, so DRAM speed get grade. This is going to change your timings uh, for the RAM automatically. Um, this is the one that I'm talking about. It's set to typical by default. I set it to fast. Do not just set this to fast just on a whim. You may, your system may not boot after you set this to fast. You know, you're, you've been warned. Your system may die by setting this to fast, all right? Just, just to let you know. Until we find out a way to clear the CMOS, um, don't do it. And then uh, this is disabled by default as well. So I don't know why the memory scrambler, and they're not tied together. So if you go into this memory configuration, go to memory scrambler, and it will be enabled, it can be disabled down here. So I just disabled both of them. Uh, the south bridge, I don't think that there's much to change. There isn't. Um, and that's it. Uh, so right now you've seen that I, I made a change to the display port. When you make changes, do them one at a time in the BIOS. And what happens is when you click save and exit, like I enabled that display port, notice that the blue light stays on for a while while it's making those changes. Some of the changes that you do, the goddamn thing like will take a minute to make the change. Like the memory scrambler one will take a full minute to just make a change and your system will just kind of just sit there doing nothing. Um, so I went ahead and enabled display port, as you can see there, and it's booting up. I do have a display port um, a USB C to display port, so I'll test that later and make sure it works, and that'll go into my full review later on. Um, but that's it. That's uh, that's basically the major steps that you want to do. Um, there's one other thing that I can show you. All right, very quickly. So if you can see right here, right that path in the registry, HK local machine system current control set control power. You're going to want to uh, look at this CS enabled value and change it to zero and what that's going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to uh, enable high performance mode in powercfg.cpl in your windows system so windows is going to now try to use as much power as you can you can also dictate different things um, in the power settings inside 3d you're going to want to have app you disable some of these things i have this as enabled the other thing that you can want to try is also going into battery or well, the power right here and disabling this. So extended battery life at the top, just disable it. I uh, have this as enabled for its LCD. And that's it. Thanks for watching.